Hello, my name is Dr. Nusheen Hamid. I'm a GP and a health technology advisor at UCL Partners. And today we're uh, lucky to be joined by Sarah Nelson, who actually presented at our primary care network event. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you. Hi, nice to see you. Can I uh, start by asking you to introduce yourself to everybody and your role? Yeah, my name is um, Sarah Nelson. I am the Deputy Director of Transformation at Healthy London Partnership, um, which is a collaboration of the health and social care system in London, and uh, it's aiming to make London the healthiest global city. Um, so I cover all the CCGs in London. Uh, I'm a cardiothoracic nurse by background. I'm married to a GP. And I also have a daughter who has uh, a long term condition. So I um, understand very much um, how important the use of technology is to integrate um, and improve care for people. Amazing, amazing. And can I can we start by asking you what was the actual problem you were addressing? So um, asthma is a very common condition in London and we have um, wide variation in the way it's managed, leading to high admissions and sadly um, high mortality. In recent years, we've had a number of coroner's deaths, um, uh, coroner's letters, sorry, from Regulation 28 letters, which are letters that um, are help the system to prevent future deaths. And this has galvanised a lot of the work that we do in London. Um, these letters have demonstrated the lack of a coordinating care record, um, the lack of communication between organisations and also the lack of asthma management plans. And we know from the National Review of Asthma Deaths in 2015 that um, if you have an asthma management plan, you are four times less likely to die from asthma. Um, but we also know from that report that 77% uh, of uh, patients didn't have a personalised asthma plan. We also know um, that 75% of asthma emissions are avoidable and 90% are preventable. Um, recommendations that they made has um, been carried out so far and we wanted uh, what they suggested is that we need to develop a system to um, to help pa patients self-manage and um, there has been a recent asthma uk uh, report as well that demonstrated that people wanted um devices to help them monitor their condition. We also know that children and young people have um, a smartphone and often are not very far away from them. So we decided that we wanted to test the feasibility of putting the asthma action plan into an app and we commissioned healthy tiny medical apps to develop the digital health passport. Great, so could you tell us a little bit about the technology and how it actually works? Yeah, so the Digital Health Passport is an app on the phone. It has the Asthma UK Action Plan within it. Um, there is also an emergency plan that um, can be accessed without having to um, you know, sign into the phone as such. Uh, there, it, the, the children and young people have the ability to track their symptoms and there's an, a visual interactive display um, that, that monitors this. Um, it's got something called uh, Health Hacks within it, uh, which has got the Asthma UK inhaler technique videos that you can view and also links to um, uh, NHS Go. And it also has um, uh, links to the NHS 111 service finder in London, um, which is linked to their directory of services. So you can look up where your local pharmacy is to collect your inhalers, for instance. Great, that sounds really useful. Um, and, and how has this sort of changed or benefited patients or even clinicians? Um, so this was a small, small pilot study really to test the uh, feasibility, accessibility and usability um, for patients and clinicians. And um, the patients felt that they really enjoyed the, the bright, bold, interactive features and that it was very simple to actually use. Um, 
and they would they made some recommendations to the future because they would like to have push alerts uh, to to remind them to take their inhalers etc. The clinicians equally felt that the videos were really useful and that it was really helpful to have uh, all the information about the patient in one one particular place. Amazing. And um, what kind of advice would you give somebody uh, looking to implement this type of technology? Um, I think the key thing is to really engage with users and to get their feedback so that you truly co-develop a, a plan um, together. And you can see in this slide that there are some of the comments of the, the users uh, during the evaluation. Um, it's really important to have a, a clinical lead and a dedicated project manager to drive forward uh, the work um, and preferably to use a sort of an agile project management um, format so that you can make changes as and when the users are actually suggesting uh, suggesting things. So you've, you're really showing that you're listening to them. Um, I think it's really key to be clear about your success measures and outcomes from the start so that that you know what the direction of travel is that you want to to make um, this particular project has gone on to manchester and uh, sheffield where they're looking at um, the uh, epilepsy and allergy plans um, and to test out uh, patient activation um, or basically to, to whether patients have the sort of skills and knowledge and, and whether they're uh, using the, the device um, effectively. Brilliant. That sounds excellent. Um, so anybody who is looking to implement this solution um, can get in touch with UCL Partners directly or Tiny, Tiny Medical Apps. Um, thank you again, Sarah, for uh, coming and doing this interview. No problem. Thanks very much for inviting me.